So you've got all your equipment. I bet you think it's time to upload your first Let's Play, right? <laughs> Wrong! Before we can upload a Let's Play, we need to record one. But before we do that, let's mention some accessories you should consider adding to your setup. Accessories Sure, you have the basics, a computer, a microphone, and a capture card. And yes, you can technically record with just that, but you may want to consider adding a few more supplies to your setup in order to make sure you're getting the most out of it. The first thing I would recommend is getting a pop filter for your microphone. Depending on your microphone, you can get one that either goes directly over the top of the microphone like this, or you can get one that attaches to a mic stand or a desk like this one. What these do is prevent extra air from hitting the microphone when you make words that have a t or a p sound in them. Mic arms and mic stands certainly aren't required, but they do help place your microphone in positions that are best suited for recording. I'd recommend getting one, but maybe not at first since they can be a little pricey and you can record without them. If you are recording in an echoey environment, you may want to purchase some acoustic foam. This goes on the walls of your room and absorbs sound waves so they don't bounce off the wall and back at your microphone. I don't personally use these myself because I cheaped out and made this foam box. My recording space isn't too echoey to begin with, and this box just seems to reduce that even more so. So if you do happen to have some spare foam lying around, you can try and build something like this and see if it gives you similar results. Well, now that we've talked about optional additions to our equipment, I think it's time we go over the setup. So I'll be going through and giving you guys my own personal best practices for when recording. Setup So you've got your microphone of choice and capture card hooked up to your PC. Great, you're almost ready to go, but first, let's talk about that capture card. Setup is quite simple. Take the video output from your console and plug it into your capture card. Depending on what type of output your console has, you may need to use adapter cables, a converter box, or a splitter of some sorts. Once you have everything attached and plugged into your capture card, make sure the wires connecting the capture card to the PC are firmly attached and out of the way so you don't accidentally unplug them mid-recording. On your computer, go ahead and open up both Audacity and whatever software came with your capture card to record video from your games console. You'll want both of these programs open and visible while recording, so you can glance at them occasionally and make sure nothing is wrong. Before you record, I'd recommend recording a short test clip from both your microphone and capture card to make sure everything is in working order, so you can fix any issues or make adjustments before you record a long episode. Now that everything appears to be in working order, it's time to hit that record button! Before you actually begin the episode, you should create a sync point. What's a sync point, you ask? Well, because we are recording our commentary and video game footage separately, we will need to combine them later on in editing. To make this easier, creating a sync point will allow you to quickly match up what you're doing in the game with what you're saying. Creating a sync point is simple. Generally, what I do is enter some menu of sorts. Any menu can work for this, and if need be, you can even use the home menu. Then perform an action of sorts, like selecting or highlighting a different option, and as you're doing this, say what you're doing. So, here's an example of a sync point. Down, 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 up, up, up. Once your sync point has been made, you can continue on recording and make your first Let's Play. Commentary Commentating can be very tricky because it's subjective, and as a result, I wouldn't say there's a wrong way to commentate. Talking alone for upwards of 15 to 20 minutes can be challenging, and you can run out of things to say, so let me give you guys some advice that I've learned over the past few years that helped me out. Practice. No, I'm not joking. Like anything else, commentating is a skill that you develop, so practice does make perfect. Usually what I do is before I record, I'll quickly play through the section of the game that I'm planning on recording, and while I'm doing this, I'll commentate to myself, paying attention to the game and looking for interesting things that I can point out while recording. I'm basically building a mental list of talking points, something I can use later on if I run out of steam and need something to mention quickly while I gather my thoughts. Buffer phrases are also very helpful, and you'll probably develop these on your own without even knowing it. Buffer phrases are things that you can say at pretty much the end of any sentence or thought, and they give your brain and mouth like an extra second to catch up, that way you can prepare the next thought and keep a consistent flow. 
I have a few phrases like this that I use a lot when I commentate, and I'd tell you what they are, but because I use them a little too much, I feel that making you aware of them would ruin some of my videos, so I'll just leave it at that. Overall, commentary can be tough starting out, but as you get more comfortable speaking and develop your own style, you will improve, so the best advice I can give you is just keep commentating you will get better at it. Before we go any further, I do briefly want to mention both 3DS and PC recording, since they are a tad different than the previous method we talked about. Let's start with PC recording. PC and 3DS. If your graphics card has an HDMI output, you can actually plug this directly into your capture card and record using the method we talked about earlier for recording consoles. This method is great if you have two computers close together, like a desktop and a laptop. Recording this way takes the strain off the computer that is being recorded so that it can use more of its power to play games or whatever it is that you're trying to record. The only downside to this method is that it does require another computer and you'll have to switch your audio device every time you record in order to pick up the sound coming from whatever is being recorded. Alternatively, you have several options available to you if you want to record on a single PC. Fraps is by far one of the best options, however, Fraps records in an uncompressed AVI format that takes up a lot of space. You'll need to make sure you have plenty of space before recording a long video. Not to mention that Fraps might cause a performance drop in some games due to the nature of video encoding. If Fraps isn't to your liking, you can try something like DxTory. DxTory is very similar to Fraps, but it allows you to use third-party codecs for video encoding. And codecs basically tell the computer how to encode and decode video streams. The benefit of using different codecs is that some allow for faster encoding, meaning that they use less CPU power, so they're less likely to cause slowdown in games. Or you can adjust the quality or bitrate of the encode to save some space on your computer. Next, you have OBS. OBS is short for Open Broadcasting Software. You might have guessed from the name, but OBS is mainly used for streaming, but it does allow for local recordings, and it actually does a pretty decent job with it. So if you mess with the settings a bit, you can use OBS to screen record your PC, and surprisingly, it doesn't kill performance. Not to mention, OBS is entirely free. And lastly, if you have a GPU by NVIDIA that is at least within the GTX 600 and up series of graphics cards, you can use NVIDIA's own Shadowplay to record. Shadowplay is a free software that comes with NVIDIA's GeForce Experience program that takes advantage of a special encoding chip on the graphics card itself to do all the video encoding. By using this dedicated video encoding chip, you'll experience virtually no loss in performance and still be able to record in very high quality. Shadowplay is great if you can use it, but you will need to record at a high bitrate in order to get the best results. Now let's talk about 3DS recordings. Firstly, to record a 3DS, you'll need to get your 3DS specifically modified with some extra hardware that will allow you to output video signals over USB. There's no other way to get consistent high quality video footage from a 3DS without one. I know there have been some developments recently with wireless capture via custom firmwares, but you'll often have to deal with other compatibility issues and inconsistent frame rates that make it, in my opinion, not acceptable for recording. You have two options for getting your 3DS modified. You can get one from Loopy, and I'll link his website in the description of this video. Loopy creates these boards in the USA, but he also has a distributor in Europe as well. I got my board from Loopy like several years ago and it's been my only 3DS capture board. I haven't had any problems with it so I can speak for the quality and durability of Loopy's product. The next option is Katsukitty. Katsukitty has the benefit of always being in stock but the downside is the prices are a little bit higher and you'll have to ship your 3DS all the way over to Japan which can take up to two weeks for it to get there and then you have to wait for them to modify it and send it back which I heard can take upwards of seven weeks. Katsukitty does support all different types of 3DS which is nice but I've heard reports of some of the craftsmanship not being as sturdy and breaking over time. Now I don't own one of these boards personally so I can't say for myself but I'm just repeating stuff that I've heard online. Take it with a grain of salt, but I figured I should mention it. Whichever capture card you do get, they come with their own software that displays what's on the 3DS over standard USB, and then can be recorded by the software itself or with another screen recorder like Fraps. Post-processing. So, you're done recording. You don't need to worry about your video file from your capture card since that's already safe on your computer, and depending on which card you use, it might already be set for editing. If you are using an Elgato game capture, it may need to process the video into a usable file format first, but that can be done inside the Elgato's recording software automatically. Now let's look at that audio. It looks alright, but let's do a little bit of post-processing, shall we? 
I'll show you my own personal method, but keep in mind that this is tailored to my own microphone environment and voice. So while the principles remain the same, the amounts and percentages I use in my effects might not be best for everyone. Anyway, first things first, I like to record a small section of audio while remaining as silent as possible. I can then select this and choose the noise removal effect and generate a noise profile. This will tell Audacity to remove this noise from the audio. I've calibrated my mic to have a very low noise floor, so you can't really see much in Audacity in terms of a waveform, but there is enough there to warrant applying this effect. Next up, Compressor. What this effect does is smooth out your highs and lows, meaning that if you got really loud at one point or were slightly too quiet, it will try to average those out and make the audio more even in terms of volume, which makes balancing the game audio and your commentary a lot easier. And the last thing I do is try to add a little bit of bass. The Blue Yeti has a very tinny sound to it by default, so boosting those bass frequencies isn't a bad idea. I actually boost mine by a factor of 6 because I naturally don't have a very bassy sounding voice. So this just helps get rid of that tinny sound and give my voice a little more depth to it. Now that we've applied those effects, it's time to export. I'd recommend exporting in either WAV or FLAC format. Both are lossless quality formats, so your audio won't get compressed and it'll sound as best as it can. The downside is that the files will be a tad larger than if you use something like MP3. Alright, well now we've got our footage in a usable format so we can begin the editing process. But I think we'll do that in the next video, so if you guys enjoyed this part, a like rating would be greatly appreciated. Once again though guys, my name is Matt, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.